I'm Kellyanne. I have worked in multiple different areas with teens, um, children's hospital, a nonprofit. I met this group of girls when they were freshmen, and I have been with them now for four years, so they're seniors. <laughs> they have access to me 24-7. Like, what's the max amount you think in one day in the past three years? Like, if you had picked the one day you spent the most time on your phone, how long do you think it was? Oh, I'd say 18. Hours? Maybe. I'd say five. The last two months, it's been eight, nine. 10, 11 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, maybe like 12. So in the past uh, 10 years or so, the time that they're spending on them has skyrocketed. On average, maybe seven hours a day. It's a lot of time when you also have to do school and sleep and eat. Seven hours a day is like a work shift. There's a lot to do on your phone. Like you can text people, you can play games, take videos, like take pictures, like there's a lot to do. We've always had these things that captured our attention, but there is a certain level of precision with which today's technology hones in on our neurology and the way that we are wired. Social media and other internet platforms make their money by keeping users engaged, and so they've hired the greatest engineering and tech minds to get users to stay longer inside of their apps and on their websites. I use uh, Instagram, Snapchat. Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Two Instagram accounts. I can just scroll for hours on end. I use Instagram, Twitter. Instagram, definitely. My favorite, Snapchat. Like if I was to delete Snapchat, like I don't think I would like hang out. I don't know what's going on with Snapchat. There's stuff called TikTok. The social media games like TikTok and Fortnite. Yeah, I look up from my phone after being there for 15 minutes and it's been like an hour. Just scrolling through Instagram. And then I end up watching other people's videos for like five hours on end. Watch Netflix for time and then like go off Netflix, check Snapchat, check Instagram, go back on Netflix. What I really do when I'm not online is kind of just sit on my ass and like eat. <laughs> I call it the race to the bottom of the brainstem. So it starts with techniques like pull to refresh. So you pull to refresh your newsfeed. That operates like a slot machine. It has the same kind of addictive qualities that keep uh, people in Las Vegas hooked. One of the central issues of Skinner's philosophy of behaviorism is that just like the pigeon, man is a predictable animal. Gambling systems have a, have a schedule that we call variable ratio. That explains why people gamble. The psychoanalysts say people gamble to hurt themselves, destroy themselves. Other people say they do gamble for the excitement and so on, but nonsense, you gamble because there is a certain schedule built into the gambling device or system as in a horse race. These same schedules will make a, a pathological gambler out of a pigeon as well as out of a person. It's interesting raising kids um, five years apart. You know, John could leave his phone sitting somewhere away. We've noticed that Jack's generation is of kids, they can't do that. They're so completely tied to their phone and they don't even know life without a telephone. Typically when I get bored, I do pick up my phone. I tend to switch apps every 30 seconds to a minute. They will literally melt their brains before they got off the yeah. device. When we think about traditional drug use, we know that the age of first use, the earlier it happens, um, the greater likelihood for addiction. And so think about, you know, with children, their brain is developing, and if they are not having balance in how they're using this, and it's a developing at a younger age, I just, you know, question how that will continue to impact them for years to come.